All right, so now we're going to talk about gout. Gout is due to its inflammation of a joint due to precipitation of monosodium urate crystals. So let's look at this joint over here. So you have this mono, you have this uric acid or monosodium um, in your blood, and if it gets too high, you're going to get that's that's the term for hyperuricemia. There's two causes for hyperuricemia: either you're making too much urate or you're not excreting the urate through the kidneys. So two causes, means high uric, uh, uric, urate in the blood, and then it, these crystals, because it's high enough concentration, will precipitate, it's gonna precipitate in a joint, let's see right here, you see? And that is gonna cause inflammation, and that's no fun. Remember, you have inflammation, so your clinical features are gonna be classic. Classic, Symptoms of inflammation include pain, swelling, redness, warmth, all of that. So you're going to see all that in a, in a single joint. You're going to get tophi formation, which I've illustrated in this picture here. Um, it's just big red inflammation. Um, and this often happens after large meals. Um, basically, if you, we're going to look at the risk factors for hyperuricemia after this. But uh, you'll often see in the... In the, um, in the the description and the question that the patient had a large meal with a lot of like some red meat or seafood, which um, that stuff is rich in purines, which is leads to, which is broken down into uric acid. Or maybe they they drank a lot of alcohol because alcohol competes for uric acid excretion in the kidney. Um, so, so that's the clinical picture for your for gout, and. If you look, take a look at the syno synovial fluid, if you aspirate that big red swollen joint, you aspirate that fluid, you can analyze it and you will see neg negatively birefringent needle shaped crystals. And that is a key thing here. You often see this and that's going to be your answer right there. And they might not even tell you it's neg negatively birefringent, they might just show you this picture here. So you have to know that it is yellow with parallel light. Okay? So when you see, need, uh, actually, even the needle-shaped crystal is easy enough for you to get the answer. This is super high yield. So remember, it's negatively birefringent, which means that it's yellow with parallel light. If it is positively birefringent, which gout is not, then it will be blue with parallel light. All right, so treatment for this is pretty simple. Um, acute treatment is you treat the inflammation. You hit them with NSAIDs or colchicine or steroids. Prophylaxis, again, goes back to the pathophysiology. So remember, it's just too much urate in the blood, and the way you get um one of the ways you get um, uric acid is you get you have hypoxanthine, and then this xanthine oxidase. Oops, we gotta go back. The xanthine oxidase. Oh man, sorry about that. Go through these slides again. Xanthine oxidase will take this and make that into uric acid. So if you inhibit xanthine oxidase with these uh, inhibitors, such as allopurinol or febuxostat, you're going to knock out the uric acid, and you're going to have less uric acid in the blood, and you're going to evade having gout. Now, there's a very similar disease called calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, CPPD. Uh, this is called pseudogout because it looks exactly the same, except for you have um, inflammation due to deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals. But it looks pretty much exactly the same. So remember how gout looked like? It's just inflammation. Painful, swollen, red joint. Um, inflammatory synovial fluid. Um, the key difference here is that the crystals look different. Crystals here are rhomboid shaped and they're positively birefringent. So you can see here it's rhomboid shaped, it's blue, it's parallel light. Note that this disease can also lead to chronic degeneration. Remember what was what was that degenerative disease of the, of the joint? Remember that wear and tear degeneration? Remember that was osteoarthritis? So this one is called pseudoarthritis because it's, you get pseudo-osteoarthritis, I'm sorry. Because it looks so similar, but it's because of calcium py pyrophosphate deposition disease. So this is the pseudo-disease because it mimics all this other stuff. Treatment is very similar to gout. Acutely, you give them the same thing. NSAIDs, colchicine, glucocorticoids. Uh, for prophylaxis, prophylaxis is cochicine. It is not the xanthine oxidase inhibitors because remember, it's a different pathophysiology. It's not related to the urate, uh, um, the urate in the blood at all. 
All right, now we're going to take a little look at risk factors for gout. Remember what we said? Remember what we said it was either due to increased urate production or decreased clearance. So if we're going to look at increased urate production, um, first of all, you can have primary gout. It can be unknown reasons. Second of all, remember urate is, you get it from breakdown of your DNA products, um, your DNA, um, base, the basic molecules. So if you have myeloproliferative or lymphoproliferative disorders where you're like okay, having rapid division of your cells, you're going to have a lot of waste products and that's going to going to get breaking down into urate again tumor lysis syndrome that's when your cells like basically die you have mass dying of cells um, again mass dying of cells you're gonna have a lot of breakdown products from dna diet i mentioned already remember what food was really really a uh, risk for what food or drink actually gives makes you at risk for gout um remember it was meats seafood remember drinking alcohol does it and then um, the next thing is leash nyan syndrome. That's HGPRT deficiency. Remember, you can pretty much remember this. Um, that's the that's this defect there, HGPRT, and you can use it as a mnemonic as well. It's like the uh, risk for gout, be pissed off, they're mentally retarded. Um, I'm blanking on the last one, but just you can consult for a aid for it. Um, and look, I already mentioned the large meals. And then look, um, the other thing is decreased urate clearance. So you clear urate pretty much like you clear everything else in your kidneys. So any problems with your kidneys will decrease that clearance. So chronic kidney disease, your kidney's not working. If you're using um, kidney medications, um, diazides, diuretics, right, alcohol, remember we said alcohol um, competes for excretion sites. And then finally, dehydration. If you have less, um, less fluid, well, first of all, you're going to have increased concentration in uric, urate in the blood because there's less volume overall. And you're going to have less blood flow through the kidney because you're dehydrated. So these are all risk factors for gout. But really, honestly, just remember this. Increased urate production, decreased urate clearance. Increased urate production comes from um, your cells dying off and then you breaking all that down all that DNA. Alright, so that's it for our gout and pseudo-gout topic.